Hello everyone, welcome to our midterm finger puppet presentation. We are the Five Musketeers. We're made up of Natalie, Cassandra, Megan, Summer, and myself, Sean. Is bright at Monsters Incorporated. I'm in this one. Part I'm in this one. Life. We power your car. We warm your home. We like your city. I'm Monsters Incorporated. Hey, look, Betty! Carefully matching every child to their ideal monster <laughs> to produce superior screen, refined into clean, dependable energy. Every time you turn something on, Monsters Incorporated is there. I must is incorporated. We know the challenge. The window of innocence is shrinking. Human kids are harder to scare. Of course, MI is prepared for the future. With the top scarers, the best <laughs> refineries, and research into new energy techniques. <laughs> okay, here I come. We're working for a better tomorrow. <laughs> Today. Monsters Incorporated. We're MI. Monsters Incorporated. We scare because we care. Our presentation is going to be based off of the movie Monsters, Inc. Target Market The target audience for the show would be age groups ranging from teenagers to adults. The target market includes the working class, both men and women, who can relate to workplace relationships and having to meet goals that were set in the work field. Format The TV show will be in the format of YouTube videos and will be in serial format and will be made up of many of it, many episodes. Serial format meaning each episode will pick up where the last one left off. Summary, plot. The TV show is based on a parody on the movie Monsters, Inc. The TV show is going to be about two co-workers, Mike and Sully, and how feeling unappreciated can affect someone's work. Poor communication skills, unrealistic goals, and tension in the workplace can cause disagreements and unhealthy workplace competition. Mike and Sully tried working separately after they had an argument about workplace contri contributions and achievements. When the star team was broken up, the rest of the workplace also lost hope and their hard work diminished also. It wasn't until communication took place for Mike and Sully to use conflict management and come to an understanding. The CEO, Mr. Waternoose, only rewards positive numbers and does not create workplace relationships with the other co-workers other than Sully, really, because he's the best one on the team. Our first character is Sully. He is one of the best scares at Monsters, Inc. Monsters, Inc. is an organization that is designed to be tall and mechanistic. This is because of the fact that there are many roles when it comes to scaring. These rules include, but are not limited to, do not touch or speak to the children. You must get into the room, scare the child until the scare meter fills up, and then get out as fast as you can. Sully is revered in Monsters, Inc. because of the fact that he is very good at following these rules. He is extremely efficient, and he works with Mike in a very good way. He does a very great job at impressing Roz, the floor administrator. Although he is one of the best scares in the organization, he is very compassionate toward others as well. When Boo found her way into the monster's realm, Sully decided to use his absolute moral views to go against the rules of the company so that he could take Boo back to where she belonged in the human world. As Sully and Mike use interpersonal skills to help improve their teamwork to save Boo, Randall trails closely behind in an attempt to murder Sully, Mike, and Boo. The next character is Mike Wazowski. He's a passionate and well-driven monster who works at Monsters Incorporated, a business dedicated to providing power to the monster community through the screams of human children. Mike's, Mike works alongside his best friend James P. Sullivan, who goes by Sully as his scaring assistant. It is Mike's job to make sure that everything is ready and functioning properly for Sully to be able to scare in the safest way possible. Monsters believe that humans are toxic, and being a scarer can be very dangerous because they have to enter the human world daily. In the scaring world, monsters take their job seriously, and must be ready always. Anything can happen when they enter the room of a child. Mike is always organized and ahead of schedule, making sure that Sully always has a new room key and child to be able to complete the task at hand. His strong passion to produce the best scare results causes him to work hard to keep a good code of ethic by remaining loyal to the company. 
At times, he does struggle with being honest when faced with confrontation, and he always seems to slip out of any sticky situation. For example, when he finds himself forgetting his paperwork, he is confronted by Roz, who is the third floor administrator for Monsters Incorporated, and he always comes up with an excuse to get himself out of doing the paperwork. This quality displays that Mike isn't always great at making decisions, but he is consistent in his work performance strategy, and together Mike and Sully produce more scare energy than any other scare team. There was always competition that is close behind, but Mike and Sully have the competitive advantage by maintaining the best results. They do this through the positive friendship they share and encourage each other to strive for more. Each morning, Mike assigns exercises for Sully to complete to stay motivated and alert when on the job. And when he is on the job, Mike completes his separate task differentiation assigned as well as being dependent upon Sully. By doing this, they produce great results in order to maintain successful operation and please their boss, Mr. Waternoose. Roz is the administrator for the Scare Floor at Monsters, Inc. She is not a main character of the show, but a supporter instead. She does not even have a last name in the show or original movie. Roz is responsible for the paperwork done on the floor and is the key holder for all the doors. Roz is an average worker and does not go above and beyond to achieve goals. Since the company is not hers, she doesn't care to do more than what she is supposed to do. She is a petulant employee that just cares about doing her job and not the other co-workers. The other associates tend to dislike her because she is always asking them about their reports. She oversees Scare's performance in accordance with the terms and conditions of their assigned contracts. She has a negative attitude and does not wish to move up in the company. She acts like that because she is an undercover agent of the Child Detective Agency and she wants to reveal the poor management system that is going on in the company and the inability of Water News to manage the corporation. Waternoose is the CEO of Monsters, Inc. He is a strict boss that only cares about his associates if they are getting fantastic numbers. Henry Waternoose encourages workplace competition and has used his power to maintain a competitive advantage in the energy company. He sets standards for his employees and expects them to meet his expectations no matter what. He sets unrealistic goals for his, com for his employees, which makes it difficult for the associates to be satisfied with their work environment since they are being overworked. He applies controls by setting standards for the other monsters and monitoring their progress and performance. Only outstanding progress is rewarded or even acknowledged. Working hard goes unnoticed if you are not the best of the best. Waternoose does not get to know his workers and does not have any type of workplace relationship. Henry Waternoose is not concerned with the lives of his employees. He is only concerned with money and the success of Monsters, Inc. Mr. Waternoose lacks interpersonal skills and this causes his associates to resent him. He is the CEO of the company and is everyone's boss, but he lacks leadership skills and the effective communication skills needed to be an actual leader. He is a manager and his company does extremely well in the monsters world. His associates are hard workers and they all produce great numbers. However, after Mike and Sully separate as a team, Mr. Waternoose does not have the trust and confidence from his associates to keep them motivated at work. His associates see Mike and Sully as better leaders and have more of an influence than the boss himself. Mr. Waternoose realizes this and becomes angry that his demanding management style was no longer working. Randall Boggs is another employee of Monsters, Inc. He is a scarer for the company and works alongside his scaring assistant, Fungus, to produce scare energy by entering the closets of children's bedrooms. Randall displays himself as a leader in the scaring world and always is in close competition for the top scarer position as he races against Sully and Mike. Randall scares children by disguising his skin like a chameleon to blend in with his surroundings, so children never know he is there. He does very well at his job and everything asks of him, but also displays many negative qualities. He is extremely jealous of Sully and his scaring abilities and portrays very sneaky behavior many times by going behind his co-workers' backs. This negative decision-making process Randall utilizes causes tension between himself and his co-workers, and he is not liked by many. He is never satisfied with his work because Sully and Mike always come out on top, and he takes his anger and frustration out on Fungus, who has built up a major fear to him. 
This negative relationship Randall has created with Fungus causes backup in their work due to Fungus's fear for Randall, which causes him to be extremely hesitant and distracted from his work task. Randall does not do a sufficient job at creating an overall positive work environment with his co-workers, and this is a major reason why Randall can never catch up to Mike and Sully. It continues to cause him anger and affects his performance in the workplace, which is not good for operation. Celia May is a receptionist at Monsters, Inc. She is also Mike Wazowski's girlfriend. She stays busy throughout her day and is very good at multitasking usually going way out of her job description to maintain order and complete tasks to conquer goals. Since she is the only receptionist at Monsters, Inc., her job is vital to the company's success. She has great conceptual skills as she sees her surroundings and understands how her team works together to finish goals. She also has technical skills and human skills, which go hand in hand. She answers phone calls all day, works with people she doesn't know, and the coworkers she does know, dealing with paperwork, logging with the energy from children's screams, taking and relaying, messages and continuously ensuring the company runs smoothly through efficiency and correct paperwork to send into the boss. At the end of the day, Celia's goals is to keep everything organized and to maintain good productivity and office morals. She continues to prove herself to her colleagues and management, always doing her job correctly and to the best of her abilities. Episode 1, Prologue. In this episode, we begin to see how Mr. Waternoose lacks interpersonal skills with the rest of his employees, other than Sully. You can see how competitive the work is between each team. We focus on interpersonal skills in this episode. Episode 2, Individual Behavior. In this episode, Mike gets jealous of Sully because Mike feels as though he never gets any credit for his hard work. Mike and Sully get into a big fight and they each decide to work alone rather than together. Because the best team in the organization split up, the rest of the employees start to lose their drive as well. We focus on communication between managers and employees in this episode. Episode 3, Conflict Management. In this episode, Randall takes advantage of the best team fighting and he starts to get the best scores. Mr. Waternoose congratulates Randall and tells everyone they need to be more like Randall. This discourages Sully and Mike. They decide to use conflict management to discuss their feelings with each other. We focus on conflict management in this episode. Episode number four consists of team organization and change. In this episode, Sully and Mike both make up and get back to work in a team. They work together as a team to meet their new goals and their new planning strategies start to encourage others to set goals and strive for the best. They use their interpersonal skills to have empathy for each other and consider each other's feelings. We focus on setting and achieving realistic goals in this episode. Our group has been working hard on the milestones and design challenges and we have gotten great results so far. These are some of the things that has been done so far in our group. Credits goes to